When it comes to rap feuds, few have been more confusing and mysterious than the beef between Drake and XXX Tentacion. By 2017, XXX Tentacion was one of the biggest rappers on the planet, breaking streaming records and amassing a massive base of loyal fans. Known for his outspoken nature, X didn't hold back when Drake released his 2017 album More Life. X accused Drake of stealing his flow from the hit single Look At Me in Drake's new song KMT. XXX Tentacion declared in a now deleted Twitter tirade that the song used his flow from breakout single Look At Me. I'm not the first he bit, nor will I be the last, he tweeted. I'm not gonna Twitter rap with people for stealing my flow. I slap people. Don't come to Florida. X further elaborated on the issue in a March 2017 interview with a Miami radio station. Drake hit up a DJ that I fought with. He was like, yo, the nigga Drake watched your interview. He said he fuck with you and he fought with your partner Ski Mask. He's like, yo, He's saying he go call your manager within the next few days. Okay. So I'm, I'm, bro, I'm amped up. Nigga, I fuck with Drake. Yeah. You feel me? Drake a genius. He was supposed to contact one of my managers. So he doesn't do it. That same fucking week, bro, he dropped a fucking video of previewing that shit in Amsterdam. I was on the phone with my dog, Chris. He was like, yo, you gotta listen to this shit. This nigga Drake a fuck nigga. That's what, exactly what he said. You could take his verse, like they did a mashup. They put his verse on my song, and they the cadence is literally. Just at the same tempo. X was the first and most vocal in a long line of people claiming Drake had stolen their flows. The feud further escalated when X took to Instagram, taking aim at Drake's mother, saying, Drake mom kinda cute, she could get it. He also posted various cryptic Instagram posts, even going as far as saying, if anyone tries to kill me, it was at Champagne Poppy. I'm snitching right now. Fast forward to June 18th, 2018. XXX Tentacion was tragically shot and killed in an attempted robbery in Deerfield Beach, Florida. Almost immediately after X's death, his cryptic warning about Drake resurfaced online, fueling rumors that Drake was somehow involved. Although Drake has consistently denied any involvement in X's death, speculation continued, especially after Drake was subpoenaed in the murder trial of XXX Tentacion in February 2023. During the trial's opening statements, Mauricio Padilla, the defense attorney for the accused, referenced the online feud and X's Instagram post, criticizing the police for not investigating Drake, saying, do you think sitting here today, years later, any detective has ever asked Drake? No, they never did that. They didn't do it because it didn't fit their version of events. Drake later avoided deposition by petitioning to the court. Drake has also spoken about what fans believe to be X's murder in various song lyrics, most recently on his 2023 album, For All The Dogs. In the song Daylight, Drake raps, I wasn't there when they caught the body. TPS think that I bought the body. Internet swear that I bought the body. Takes more than that to go pop somebody. The speculation around Drake's involvement in XXX Tentacion's murder remains a topic of debate among fans to this day. While XXX Tentacion was notably vocal about his grievances with Drake, few were as openly hostile towards the Canadian rapper as the late DMX. The genesis of DMX's resentment towards Drake dates back to 2012. During a candid interview on The Breakfast Club, DMX expressed his strong disapproval of Drake, a sentiment that surprised many given the lack of personal history between the two artists. I don't like anything about Drake. Mm -hmm. Mom, I, I don't like his voice. Drake, I don't like, I don't like what he talks about. I don't, I don't talk. I'll be trying to tell his face. I don't, I, don't like I, don't, I don't like the way he walks like nothing. Damn I don't like his haircut. <laughs> I might just, let me shut up. <laughs> I'll just stop right there. This animosity, however, had deep-rooted origins. The core of DMX's disdain lay in a controversy surrounding Drake's involvement in a posthumous Aaliyah project. Aaliyah Dana Hogton, an influential figure in contemporary R&B, pop, and hip-hop, left an indelible mark on the music industry before her tragic passing in 2001 at the age of 22. Known for her collaborations with Timbaland, Missy Elliott, and Static Major, Aaliyah's untimely death left a void in the hip-hop community. In 2012, reports surfaced that Drake would serve as the executive producer for a posthumous Aaliyah record a project that was to be created without the involvement of her original collaborators. This decision incited a significant backlash within the hip-hop community, as many felt it was inappropriate for Drake and his producer, Noah Forty Shabib, to undertake such a project without consulting those who had worked closely with Aaliyah during her lifetime. When asked about his thoughts on the project, DMX did not mince words. It's disrespectful. Very much so. Disrespectful, like, 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 how, like that don't even make sense. I wish it was like maybe, Seven years ago, mm -hmm. well, maybe like like ten years ago, where well, you know, catch 
Elevator beat him up. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah, piece of shit. Fucking thing. Like, motherfucker, you didn't even know this woman. You didn't even know that you, you, you were in middle school. What the fuck gives you the fucking right? DMX's vehement opposition reflected a broader sentiment among Aaliyah's collaborators and family members, who felt that Drake's involvement was a disservice to her legacy. The controversy grew to such an extent that Drake eventually decided to scrap the project altogether. In a 2014 interview with Vibe, Noah Forty Shabib discussed the decision, stating, The world reacted to Drake's involvement so negatively, I just wanted nothing to do with it. That was a very sad experience for me. I was naive to the politics surrounding Aaliyah's legacy and a bit ignorant of Timbaland's relationship and everyone else involved and how they'd feel. But ultimately, I wasn't comfortable and didn't like the stigma. Aaliyah's mother saying, I don't want this out, was enough for me. I walked away very quickly. Despite the backlash and public criticism from DMX, Drake remained a fan and loyal supporter of the New York rapper. This admiration was evident when Drake decided to sample DMX's music on his 2016 album, Views. However, there was one significant obstacle, obtaining DMX's approval to use the sample. Realizing that reconciliation was the only path forward, Drake reached out to veteran rapper Nori, one of the few people with direct access to the elusive DMX. In a 2018 interview with Montreality, Nori recounted how he facilitated a truce between the two artists helping Drake secure the necessary clearance and, in the process, mend their fractured relationship. I thought it was a just great deed to do, you know what I'm saying? Get them on the phone, so I had them exchange numbers, and it all got worked out. When you sample an artist's record that's a legend, that's not dead, call them. For Drake to do that, that's no, it's, that's no more, you can't get no more hip-hop than that. That's real hip-hop to me. Despite the initial animosity, the resolution between DMX and Drake serves as a reminder of the enduring influence of hip-hop's pioneers on the new generation. While Drake may have been able to win DMX's respect, he will likely never achieve the same with Joe Budden. Drake's feud with Joe Budden traces back to 2016, when Joe Budden took aim at Drake's then-latest album, Views. On the Joe Budden podcast, Budden criticized the album, describing Drake as sounding, quote, uninspired, and accusing him of hiding behind the skills of his producers, stating, 40, you sound amazing. 40 continues to progress. Drake, you do not. This blunt critique was a clear shot at Drake's artistic direction and abilities, setting the stage for the animosity that would follow. In 2016, Budden escalated the conflict by releasing the diss track, Making a Murderer, where he targeted multiple rappers, including Drake. In the track, Budden sampled an old clip of Drake expressing admiration for him, adding a personal edge to the diss. This move was a deliberate attempt to undermine Drake by juxtaposing his past respect for Budden with Budden's present contempt for his work. Over the ensuing years, Drake and Budden engaged in a series of subliminal disses, leaving fans uncertain about the true nature of their friendship. This uncertainty persisted until 2023, when the feud reignited with fresh intensity. The catalyst was Budden's scathing review of Drake's album For All the Dogs. Budden accused Drake of immaturity in his subject matter, saying, I want to hear adult Drake rapping for adult people. He's rapping for the kids, the streams, the accolades. He ain't trying to rap for me. I can accept that. Budden's pointed comments about Drake's age and artistic direction struck a nerve in the rapper. Drake responded with a lengthy rant in DJ Academics' comment section, accusing Budden of failing in his music career and projecting his self-hatred onto him. Drake's tirade was deeply personal, highlighting Budden's financial struggles and contrasting them with his own success. He wrote, You switch careers because the things that pop into your brain had you broke, living check to check, and the raps you write had 450 men showing up to your shows in dusty and east jeans to screw up their face to Mood Music 29 and pretend you are the GOAT. This guy is the poster child of frustration and surrendering. You retired and we never hung up your jersey. We don't even remember your number. You withdrew from rap. Not because you accomplished all you need to, it's because it wasn't working for you. Drake's scathing words underscored his belief that Budden's critiques stemmed from jealousy. Budden's response to Drake's diatribe was brief yet pointed. In a screenshot captured by DJ Academics on Instagram, Budden wrote, You'll grow up sooner or later. Father Time is undefeated. The Drake Button feud, characterized by personal attacks and professional jabs, reveals deeper tensions about artistic integrity, success, and maturity in the hip hop industry. Out of all the rappers who seemingly hate Drake, one of the most unexpected was Metro Boomin. Despite a history of successful collaborations, the relationship between the two has soured. 
evolving into a dramatic and public conflict. Drake and Metro Boomin's partnership began with Promise. Metro was the driving producer behind much of Drake and Future's 2015 joint album, What a Time to Be Alive, a project that solidified both artists' places at the top of the rap game. Drake and Metro's professional chemistry was evident, and they continued to work together, including on Drake and 21 Savage's 2022 album, Her Loss. The turning point came in late 2022, when Metro Boomin released his solo album, Heroes and Villains. The album was a personal project for Metro, showcasing his unique production style and featuring collaborations with various artists. However, as her loss garnered more attention and accolades, Metro's frustrations began to show. Metro took to X to express his disappointment in a series of now-deleted tweets, accusing the music industry and award shows of favoritism, saying, Her loss keeps winning rap album of the year over heroes and villains. Proof that award shows are just politics and not for me. I don't care about awards, honestly. The true award and reward is knowing that the music I spend so much time on brings joy to people's everyday lives. His discontent did not stop there. Metro engaged in a series of cryptic and now deleted tweets that many interpreted as shots at Drake, fueling speculation of a brewing feud. Over the following months, the tensions between Drake and Metro Boomin escalated through subliminal messages in songs and social media posts. This cold war erupted into an all-out battle on March 22, 2024, when Metro released like that, in collaboration with Future and Kendrick Lamar. While Drake was not explicitly named, the lyrics left little doubt about the target. This track marked a significant escalation in the feud, with Metro Boomin making a bold statement against one of hip-hop's biggest stars. Drake responded with his own diss track, push-ups, where he instructed Metro to shut his hoe ass up and play some drums. This line sparked one of the most unusual and hilarious twists in the feud, Metro Boomin's release of the instrumental BBL Drizzy. The beat was a direct jab at rumors that Drake had undergone cosmetic surgery. On top of its release, Metro Boomin set up a challenge, saying the rapper who dropped the best bars on the instrumental would get a free Metro Boomin beat. The instrumental went so viral it forced Drake to address it by rapping over the beat himself in an attempt to diminish its impact. As it stands, there seems to be no end in sight for the Drake Metro Boomin feud. In the world of rap, few rivalries have sparked as much attention and controversy as that between Kendrick Lamar and Drake. Drake and Kendrick Lamar's relationship did not begin in hostility. Earlier in their careers, they appeared to be on good terms. By the time Kendrick released his debut studio album in 2011, Drake had already spent six years establishing himself as a dominant force in the music industry. Recognizing Kendrick's potential, Drake invited him on the club Club Paradise tour in 2012, along with ASAP Rocky. This tour marked Kendrick's first major exposure, introducing him to a broader audience and helping cement his position as one of the era's leading rappers. In 2012, Kendrick featured Drake on Poetic Justice, a track featured on Kendrick's acclaimed album Good Kid Mad City. The initial seeds of their rivalry were sown in 2013, with Kendrick Lamar's verse on Big Sean's Control. Kendrick took aim at several rappers of the era on this verse, including Drake in what many saw as a declaration of competitive respect. However, Drake didn't take kindly to the challenge. In an interview with Billboard, Drake downplayed Kendrick's verse, calling it an ambitious thought and asserting, I know good and well that he's not murdering me at all in any platform. Drake further responded with subliminal disses on his 2013 album, Nothing Was The Same with lines like, I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. By 2014, Kendrick's stance hardened. In an interview with DJ Who Kid, Kendrick explained that he could no longer make music with Drake, citing their vastly different backgrounds. Nah, I, I, I couldn't. We come from two different worlds, mm. two different backgrounds. I, I really don't see that uh, playing out, you know, as, as entertaining. Maybe to, you know, the people listening, you know, but not for myself. For nearly 10 years, there were almost no developments in this feud, until it intensified in October 2023, when Drake and J. Cole collaborated on First Person Shooter, a track Kendrick was reportedly invited to feature on, but declined. The song celebrated hip-hop's so-called Big Three, Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar, a concept that Kendrick seemingly resented. In March 2024, Kendrick responded on his own diss track, Like That, where he dismissed the notion of the Big Three, rapping, Mother the big three, it's just big me. 
and launching direct attacks at Drake. From this point on, Kendrick's animosity culminated in a series of diss tracks, including Euphoria, Meet the Grams, and Not Like Us. In these songs, Kendrick meticulously dissected and criticized various aspects of Drake's persona, from his lyrics and relationships to his fashion sense. Kendrick left no stone unturned, delivering a scathing bundle of songs that has the potential to alter public perception of Drake for years to come. His third diss track, Not Like Us, was an unprecedented success, marking the longest reign for a diss track in chart history. Additionally, Not Like Us received more views on YouTube than all of Drake's Kendrick diss tracks combined. At its core, Not Like Us challenges the very notion of what it means to be authentically hip-hop. Kendrick's critique of Drake goes beyond personal attacks. It questions the standards by which success and credibility are measured in the genre. This underscores a deeper issue within hip-hop the question of authenticity. Drake has often faced criticism for his middle-class upbringing, Canadian roots, and mixed-race identity, which some purists believe make him an untraditional figure in the genre. Hip-hop, born from struggle and adversity, has long held ideals that often exclude those who do not fit a certain mold. Kendrick Lamar's campaign against Drake taps into these long-standing tensions. By voicing the criticisms that have followed Drake throughout his career, Kendrick has struck a chord with hip-hop purists, who question what it means to be authentically hip-hop. This feud is not just a personal battle, but a reflection of the genre's evolving identity and the ongoing debate over its cultural boundaries. As this modern rap war continues to unfold, it forces fans and artists alike to reconsider the values and standards that define the world of rap. Despite these critiques, Drake has achieved unparalleled success, breaking sales and touring records set by The Beatles, Elvis, and Michael Jackson and accumulating more digital streams than any other artist in music history. Regardless of anyone's thoughts or opinions, Drake's fans still love him, and he will forever be hailed as one of the most legendary rappers in music history. What are your thoughts on Drake and his various feuds? Let me know down below in the comments, and like and subscribe for more videos from Cassius Morris Official.